The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Karen, what do you have in your hands there? Da -na -na -na. Oh, it's a Zelda poster. Where did you get that? I got it when I got my copy of Breath of the Wild. But don't you need a new Nintendo console in order to play that? Da -na -na -na. It's the new Nintendo Switch. That's right, folks. In today's episode, <laughs> we're not going to play the Switch. We're going to take it apart and see what's inside and comment on what we find. Specifically, we're going to see how it compares to a laptop or a tablet, since people seem to be questioning what exactly this is. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired Designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Well, Karen, Max stood in line for eight hours and achieved a Nintendo Switch. Oh. Well, let's take a look at this thing. Okay. Are there any rooftop parties depicted on this box? There are not. Okay. The only, only console I ever bought on launch day was the Game Boy Advance. Really? Yeah. Plug it in, set it up, need help. <laughs> That's what you're gonna need. Step one, plug it in. Step two, set it up. Step three, you're gonna need some help. <gasps> You got the blue and purple one? It's really small. My brother and I had this when we were younger on road trips. We'd be like, eh, yeah. But then my brother would be like. Don't you have like 10 brothers? I have three. So if I'm on a plane, I can be like, I'm playing Skyrim on a plane. This actually fits my hand perfectly. <laughs> it's like it was made for me. The buttons are closer in size to what you'd see in the uh, DS on a home console. That's different. Oh wait, don't these things have ice cubes in them? There was a rumor when they first released the iPhone that they had um, people with very large hands model it to make it look smaller than it actually was. Eh. Well, here's the console itself. Well, I noticed in some of the videos online that there's lots of screws, which is good for our cause. Yeah. Look, there's regular Phillips. Oh, it's all Phillips. They don't even have any tri- Oh, look at this. This is weird. Look, there's Phillips screws in the sides, mm -hmm. but tri screws on the back. That's the important part. Well, it's thicker than your average modern uh, tablet. Well, I mean, which is good because that means it has more power and more battery. And it actually has active cooling. See that? There's a fan. I think there would need to be. Uh, not necessarily, but they're probably clocking it pretty good. So that's where the game goes. And there's a headphone jack, so they're doing better than Apple. Volume, power, that's pretty standard. USB-C on the bottom. So USB-C, you can get video out of it. And then, oh, the kickstand. Oh, then you can put extra memory in the kickstand, which is good because apparently it only has like 25 gigs after formatting. Oh. Well, the kickstand does feel kind of flimsy. I, I, I read online that people were complaining about that. Can I, can I open the rest? Yeah, go for it. Stuff Switch and things. Switch guide, warranty things. Oh man! All right, I gotta assemble Ranger this. Ranger thing. So there's a slide. Shoop. Yeah, seriously, this is like made for me. This is like so comfortable. Can you do it just via gravity, like on the commercial? Oh, look at this. See, this is just a light tunnel. See, it's a piece of plastic. Oh yeah. Right. The LEDs in the side of the controller basically just go through that light tunnel and illuminate out the front. So this is just an inert piece of plastic. This is a piece of plastic with metal oh, yeah. things on it. I mean, that's a pretty clever idea. But it's too bad this thing can't charge the Joy Cons. Oh, this is the power brick. Is that like the Decepticons? Ah, uh, okay. Let's see. Five volts. Oh, it has five volts and fifteen volts. It must use the fifteen volts for fast charging and when it's running in docked mode, which is kind of like fart mode. So. These are basically symmetrical, so it should go on like this. I think this is just to increase the mass of the controller. So well, that's what I was saying. Grip. Yeah. Because if you look at it, ah, um, oh, man, that's kind of tricky. See, I don't. Here's a concern I have with the system. Like, if you buy this for your kid, mm -hmm. they could they could lose the Joy Cons. They could lose the strap thing. They could break the strap thing. I mean, like that's how it was with the Wiimote. I mean, granted, these are smaller, but this isn't much different than the size of like my Roku remote. These are eighty that I, dollars a pair. I know. To buy separate. Oh, is this the adapter box? Yeah. Wow, it's not much to it. Well, there has to be something to it. I mean, it has to at least have a USB-C to HDMI adapter. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should take this apart first. Strange that this has the security tri screws on it. Oh, that's too big. You can open our console all you want, but whatever you do, do not open our proprietary piece of plastic that has a USB port on it. So it's got uh, two USB two here, and then one on the inside is USB. USB 3. You can tell because it's blue. Right where I left you. Not where I left you. So it reminds me of one of those movies where like pulling bullets out of Wolverine or something and then they like, there's always a close up of the bullet going thunk into the jar. It's like, I'm Wolverine. I fought in the Civil War and now I'm an old man. 
Little good. So USB-C has six differential pairs. I wonder if they hit anything on the bottom here. They may have, oh, that's efficient. I guess we can look up the chips. Let me grab my phone. VL210Q4. All right, so this chip here is a USB 3.0 hub controller. Is this even, oh, it's just, it's just set there in place. I say you wanna pull it out, there's just those two tabs. Well, we have to release the ribbon cable first. Yeah, come on, there we go. So they're running all the current through this ribbon cable. Oh, there's a few more things in the back. Uh, we got two 8-pin SOSIC chips. Those are probably some sort of power regulators. Oh, it's got a, another USB-C here. That must be the power input. I mean, there's yeah, there's not much to this. I wish we could figure out what this chip in the middle is doing. It's probably like the king of the wicker people. See, so you got the HDMI here. And it, see how the traces, you can see the four differential pairs quite clearly. Oh yeah. Those are the video signals. Mm -hmm. Then they go into vias, and then the other side of the board, they go right here. So I'm thinking, the chip in the middle is probably doing like a USB-C to HDMI adapter. We can't find the part, but that's most likely what it is. Basically just a USB hub is all this really is. You wanna put that back together? Karen, I can't wait any longer. Let's take apart the main console. Hey, maybe you could take apart one of the Joy-Cons while I do that. Okay. Now look, all, all those screws, all they were was to hold this in place. What? There's like a chip at the bottom of it? Huh? The oh yeah, look. Console? Yeah, there's a, there's a connection. See that? Yeah. That must be how it charges and gets the data off of it. Hey, are you using the Triforce on that one? I am. Okay, do you have an extra? This has Tri on the back and Phillips on the sides, which is so weird. I will never be able to hear it waiting for a star to fall without hearing it as waiting for a sloth to fall. <laughs> <laughs> it's forever changed in my head. So I'm kind of wondering if this is going to have a uh, soldered RF cage on all the chips like most cell phones do. If it does, that's gonna make it more difficult to see what's inside of it. Oh, there's a, look, there's a little screw on top. Then there's a Phillips on top. That's so bizarre. Oh, there's a little screw under it. And this one's Phillips. Like, this is so random. Maybe some guy was like drinking sake and be like, oh, Phillips here. And that one is gonna be a tri screw. Oh, I'm so drunk. Oh, well, it's got a little, little fan. Cute little fan. All right, so this is just a wild guess. This is gonna be the battery here. It's gonna be most of the unit. This is gonna be heat pipe going from the main system on a chip. It's gonna bring the heat up here. So there's gonna be a little heat pipe in this thing, and then you're gonna have like a little bit of a radiator here, and then you're gonna have most of your other circuitry right here. SD card assembly. So people are like, oh, the size of the memory doesn't matter because you can just use SD cards. But SD cards have lower bandwidth than built-in memory. I did notice something interesting on the, uh, the cartridge. I mean, there's quite a few pins on it, probably so it can load faster. It's a uh, falsehood to think that cartridges don't load. That's BS. They have to load things into RAM. Like Super Nintendo games actually did a lot of loading. When the screen fades out and goes black and comes back in, guess what? It was loading. Well, okay, I'll say this so far about the system. It's built like a game console, not a glued together cell phone. So that's a win. Oh, okay, I'm thermal paste. That. Look at that. Oh. They were dissipating into the case. That's interesting. Do you need to search for you? Yeah. You okay. know why it's interesting? Why? Because it's on a separate board. It's like that's meant to be upgradable. Ooh. That's probably RAM if I had to guess. Um, okay, I looked this up. Uh, T-H-G-B-M-H-G-8-C-2-L-B-A-I-L. Flash memory. Okay. This is why I, I was like, mm hmm. See, look at this. Boom. Mm. They could put more memory in the system just by changing that part. The thing is, the fact that they um, made this a removable part and spent money on two connectors really tells you something. They have plans. So, so expect to see you. a switch with more memory very soon. Yep. <laughs> and then the rest of us are gonna be like, ah. Well, Karen, the formatted size is like 25 gigabytes and Zelda's like 14 gigs. So basically the, if you didn't have a cartridge, which is the future, the internal memory would only hold one game, one full size game.
All right, so I'm gonna take apart this next. This looks like some sort of cartridge breakout board. See how it's at a different offset than the rest? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, why don't you grab the Zelda cartridge? Let's stick it in there sure. just for reference. So apparently the cartridges taste bad. That's what they say. Why are people tasting them? Uh, I forget why. Maybe someone was like putting it in their mouth and then while well, they did something else. All right, here we go. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Oh my gosh. Does it taste like death? So Are you gonna be okay? It's yeah, it has a really strong taste. Does it back? Yeah. Oh my! You know what it probably is. You know what it probably is. It's probably added on purpose to keep kids from eating it. <laughs> It's, it's probably like... No, I'm serious. Why? No, it's probably like pet no bite. Have you ever had like accidentally eaten that stuff? I, I mean, I'm not going to try it and tell you if it tastes like no bite. I bet that's why though. It's like a kid thing. Of course, the cartridges are just, just as small in the Nintendo DS. There's no reason for a plastic to taste like that. <laughs> Yet he keeps tasting If it. you continue to lick it, can you get the coating off and then you can lick it all you want? Yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> ah! I'm not gonna put anything about. That is the foulest tasting plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try it? <sighs> All right, so I think this is like a self-contained cartridge thing. Okay. See, there's two connectors here. There's a flat flex here, and then there's another connector which is probably going to the headphone jack. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, let's do something before we go any further. Let's remove the battery. Are there tabs? Does that go up? It comes up. There we go. Oh, look, they handily label it positive, negative. Oh, so nice. Ah, uh, it's taped in place. Well, at least it's disconnected. So yeah, I like this is, it's small, but it's not that small. And it's put together like, more like a laptop than a, than a tablet. So kudos to Nintendo for that. That's a lot of connectors for a headphone jack. Yeah, see, there's that chip between, look at all the, I mean, there's way, there's far more connectors here than on the chip. Oh, this radiator is not connected to the fan. All right, I'm gonna remove the heat sink off of the SOC. Okay, it's sliding around, which means it just has heat sink paste on it. Yeah, see how it moves like that? Oh, yeah. Very carefully, it's yeah, like see. A dry point, yeah. yeah, there's just a bit of, not quite <clears throat> vacuum, Goop. but. There's a giant Stable. monkey in this island, we gotta get photos of it. It's a portable system with a heat pipe and a radiator. There's a system on a chip. Hmm, yeah, I was kind of worried about this, so. Yeah, it's got this RF can protecting the system on a chip and probably, you get soldered to the board. Well, there's, yeah, I'm not sure. <sighs> I mean, we still need to find the RAM, which I believe is four gigabytes on this system. So it's probably gonna be RAM, uh, some sort of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi adapter in there as well. Um, we can keep digging. Peter Jackson made a good movie about a girl and a gorilla trapped in a three hour movie with Jack Black running from dinosaurs. Now here's the Wi-Fi antenna. It's got proper Wi-Fi antenna. See, it's got the connectors here. Oh yeah. The Xbox One doesn't even have that anymore. Yeah, this thing's got an antenna as well. I wonder where this connector goes to. It's probably either the screen or the cartridge, because the cartridge data port is here. Nintendo's like, let's see how many different types of connectors we can put in one system. It's like a booby trap, you know, like Indiana Jones, that whip guy. PCB should be coming loose now. So Felix, what was your first Nintendo console? The Nintendo. The Nintendo Nintendo? Yeah. So that's how you know if you're truly old school, if you call it the Nintendo or if you call it the NES. Cause this is the Nintendo. <laughs> This is pretty interesting. What did you find? Just how this was put together. No? It's not like I found anything, it's just the ribbon cable wraps around. It's a booby trap. Underneath them, there's screws underneath it. The Havitas are closed, poison is fresh three days. It's like, what was the order in which this was assembled? That's what you have to figure out. In Latin, Jehovah starts with an I. Oh, I see, this one goes this way. Come on. Geez, that's a really high density connector. Look at that. Mm. Yeah. Wonder if that's where the cartridge went in. All right, so the, the USB-C is kind of holding it in the case. Unless this is a combination uh, video and cartridge connector cable. I'm assuming there's still one more big cable that we haven't seen yet. Maybe removing the fan will help. Oh, the fan is vibration mounted. Look at that. They didn't just whack this together. Uh, yeah, they definitely put. Yeah, look at that. It's vibration mounted. Yeah. This is uh, this Oh, is... Nintendo's really good at building things. You know, even though, like, sometimes I'm mean to Nintendo, I mean, their engineering is great. Maybe not as good as Sony, but. <laughs> oh, there we go. That was it. Ta da! 
Yeah, you know what? Maybe we can remove this can. Yeah, it looks like this is a combination video and cartridge access port. Cause that's the only major large connection coming out of this system. Oh, look at those traces. Look at that. That is so, that is so ancient. It's interesting. Why did they do, you know what? They probably did that for signaling purposes. Cause even though electricity moves at the speed of light, it still adds up. It's kind of interesting. Oh yeah, there's the uh, differential pairs going into the USB-C. All right, so just to predict, this is gonna be your system on a chip. And this is going to be probably two two gigabyte RAM chips. And then over here is gonna be your wireless. Karen will be like, no, my switch, Zelda, no. So you have two, two stages of thermal paste. Yep. Mm. Oh, gee, three points. Now, you know what's interesting about this? This looks a lot closer to, um, uh, it looks like a more of a full-size CPU than something in a portable system. There it is, NVIDIA. Interesting, there's no Nintendo branding on the chip. Really? Hmm. Like, you can go back to like the Game Boy Advance and it's uh, an ARM chip, but you know, got Nintendo written all over it, but this is just uh, NVIDIA. This is, uh, I think it's a Maxwell uh, Architecture Tegra processor. So aside from the fact that this is ARM, it's kind of closer to a laptop, really, like the way the heat sink is done, which is good, you know, for Nintendo fans. <laughs> As I speak of them as a separate class from myself. Well, because it means the system has more potential for power. This is probably just gonna be your Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapter. I'll take the can off anyway. <laughs> yep, there it is. Well, Karen, we got the Nintendo Switch back into one piece, or like eight pieces since there's so many accessories. If you have any questions or comments about the Nintendo Switch, let us know on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll switch you next time. Rooftop party. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I got my millionaire apartment. Oh, now I'm a millionaire hotel. Well, why didn't that guy? Okay, that guy had like a million dollar apartment. He stayed in a million dollar hotel, but then he flew coach. Mm. I don't know. I'm going to go play this at a rooftop bicycle polo party. Hey, Ben, I found something in the controller. What is it? Check it out. <gasps> wow. I could hear it before, but now it's real. I'm a ghost of toast. We can put that ape in the circus for a great price. He's finally here, ready for you. The first member of the DK group. This was written by a person in England who's never heard rap. Cartridge is as sour as lemons. The taste stays on my tongue. Nintendo, you keep me from wanting to eat the cartridges. But then that, that also, like why were people tasting it anyway? Someone was probably like, just like, oh, I gotta put the cartridges in my mouth while I do something. <laughs> God, it's like, it's like licking a toad. <laughs> the Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.